In this video, we want to explain a few things about winch launching a glider, how to do it, and what to keep in mind. A winch launch is a method used to launch gliders into the air using a ground-based winch. The winch is typically located at the far end of the runway or field, and it rapidly reels in a long cable attached to the glider. Here's a quick overview how the process works. The glider is positioned at one end of the airfield with a tow cable attached to a hook on the underside of the fuselage. The other end of the cable is connected to the winch, which is several hundred meters away. Once everything is ready and safety checks are completed, the pilot gives a signal for lifting the wing, hand signal, thumbs up, and via radio to the winch operator. The operator begins reeling in the cable at high speed. This pulls the glider forward very quickly, accelerating it down the runway. As the glider gains speed, it becomes airborne. The pilot then pulls back on the control stick to pitch the nose up, climbing steeply after reaching the safety height. The cable continues to pull the glider upward, much like a kite on a string. At the peak of the climb, typically between 300 and 500 meters, sometimes even more, depending on wind, cable length, and technique, the pilot releases the cable. The cable falls back to the ground, using a small parachute to slow its descent, and the glider is now free to fly. The cable is then wound back to the launch point to be used again for the next glider. The cables used for winch launching can be made of either steel or plastic. At the aircraft end, there's a specific assembly designed for both safety and functionality. It begins with a lead rope, which helps prevent entanglement during the initial roll in the takeoff phase. Following this are the predetermined braking points, and finally the parachute, which ensures the rope falls gently to the ground after release. The braking points must be carefully matched to the glider's weight. A two-seater with two pilots, for example, is significantly heavier than a lightweight single-seater, and this must be taken into account. To ensure the correct braking points are used, the wingman should always show them to the pilot before takeoff. Using the wrong ones could be dangerous. Fortunately, they are easy to swap out, as you can see here. The cable is attached to the glider's winch hook, located near the center of gravity. We do not use the aerotow coupling for this type of launch. Have you noticed anything wrong with the cables? You should. And that's exactly why we carry out thorough checks before every launch. One final note on the hook in commands, the wingman begins by saying, out. The pilot then pulls the release and confirms without. Next, the wingman connects the cable and says in. The pilot releases the mechanism and confirms within. Some winches are equipped with two cables. To avoid any confusion, we use a clear naming convention. The cable closest to the road is called the street cable, and the one nearer to the hill is referred to as the hill cable. Once the cable is hooked in and the wingman has leveled the wings, the pilot signals readiness to the winch operator with a standard phrase, Oscar Echo 1, 2, 3, 4, double seated, on street cable, ready. The winch operator then responds with, winch is coming. This means they are slowly taking up the slack in the cable to ensure a smooth start without sudden acceleration. Winde von ASK 13 am Bergseil doppelsitzig abflugbereit. 
When the cable begins to tighten and move, the pilot confirms with winch cable tossed and the actual launch begins. Off person. Yes. In the cell strap. Always gemütlich. We always say winch cable instead of just cable. This helps to clearly distinguish it from the aero towing activities at the same time. Important note about the wingman's role. The wingman must level the wings, but must not hold the wing in front of the leading edge. Acceleration can be strong, so always hold the wing from the side and avoid applying any upward or downward force. The wings must remain neutral and balanced. Typically, the glider takes off without the help of the pilot because of the speed. We want to reach a somehow nice altitude for further actions. So, after reaching an adequate airspeed, the pilot starts pulling back the stick to enter a steeper climb after reaching the safety height. This rotation should be a smooth transition, not an abrupt movement. Why? If we pull the stick too early, we induce a heavy drag and risk stalling the plane we are in a very unfavorable position with our noses pointed straight up. So, if the cable breaks in this situation and we are near to the ground, we are in a very dangerous situation. We want to avoid this. We will first climb moderately until we reach a safe altitude, approximately after five seconds. Then, with enough altitude, we can go into a steeper climb angle. During launch, we just keep the wings leveled. Typically, we launch against the wind, and if the launch direction is not 100% into the wind direction, we have to keep a lead angle into the wind direction. We do this with the rudder, not with the ailerons. Don't forget, we want to avoid a jackrabbit start at all costs. There is a sentence you should remember. There are brave pilots, and there are old pilots, but there are no brave and old pilots. Oh my God. <laughs> and how long does a launch take? Well, it depends on the cable length, but a medium-sized cable, say 800 meters, brings the glider to 400 meters in about 30 seconds. But this also depends on the strength of the headwind. You will notice a decreasing climb and also a change of attack angle of your glider when you are at the end of the launch. The cable takes a very steep angle under the plane and at some point the force from the winch does not help any more in climbing. We are just barely above the winch. This is the release point. Either the automatic coupling will drop the cable or the pilot will do. Be aware of having the right airspeed. There is no more cable pulling you. Be prepared for a short nick upwards when you have pulled the stick too much. Now stabilize your plane and prepare to enter the local traffic pattern. Depending on your gained altitude, there is eventually room for one or two circles, but not in the traffic pattern 
please do it outside. What if the release mechanism does not work? Well, there are two safety options. First, there is the breaking point in the cable, and if this does not help, the winch operator can also cut the cables if something goes wrong. Yes, unfortunately, this happens sometimes. If it occurs below 100 meters, nose down immediately, gain airspeed, and land straight ahead. You probably only used 300 meters of the winch launch distance. You are safe for 500 meters free airfield in front of you, plenty space. If this occurs above 100 meters, nose down, gain maneuvering airspeed, and do a normal, eventually shorter, traffic pattern. Under rare circumstances, you can do a reversal curve, but this would mean you have to land with the wind. Not a very good idea. You will likely overshoot the airfield because of the tailwind. Cable brake training is mandatory in your gliding lessons. Be always prepared for a brake. Someone has to bring the cables back to the launch site and someone has to bring the gliders back. During training lessons, this is done by the students, waiting for their turn. When you see that the second cable was used already, you can start retrieving the cables while the other team get the gliders back to the launch site. This avoids waiting times between launches. A well-coordinated team manages 140 starts a day even more. In Germany and Austria, the retrieval vehicle is called L-E-P-O. Why? We have no idea. Nobody should be in front of the starting plane. No person, car or plane. Check right wing, front, left wing. The airspace should be free. When crossing the cables, make absolutely clear that you have permission of the winch operator. Choose correct braking points and winch launch hook. The down range under the winch cables should always be free. Beware of falling cables. Stay away from the cables during launch. Don't disturb the pilot or winch operator during start and then keep the radio communication to an absolute minimum. Be always prepared to release. Release immediately when you cannot level the wings. If you release when the wing touches the ground, it may be too late. Maintain a shallow climb until reaching safety height. If power is lost near the ground, immediately lower the nose to gain maneuvering speed and land ahead.